Okay, we're going to do the last lesson from chapter two. This is 2-7 flowchart and paragraph proofs. So our objective today is to write flowchart and a flowchart and a paragraph proofs. First of all, what are flowchart and paragraph proofs? Well, a flowchart proof is just another style of proof, and it uses boxes and arrows to show the structure of the proof. These proofs are used a lot in engineering and in sciences. A paragraph proof is a third, and by the way, the final style of a proof, and it presents the steps and reasons in a sentence form. Before we start writing these proofs, there's a few last theorems that I want to show you from uh, this section. First of all, the common segments theorem. So the common segments theorem has four points set up in collinear form like this. And if we are given that AB is congruent to CD, so that's congruent to that, then we, if we add the middle here uh, to AB, so it becomes AC, right? We're adding the middle. That should also be congruent to adding the middle to CD and becoming BD. So in other words, what you're doing is we're just adding this middle segment on to the two segments on the outside. So that's the common segments theorem. Vertical angles theorem says that all vertical angles are congruent. Now you know this because we've done this before, but this is just putting it into a theorem for you so you can use it on proofs. Vertical angles are congruent. So if we are told that angle one and angle two are vertical, then we know that angle one is congruent to angle two. Okay? And the last one is if ang uh, congruent angles are supplementary, then they are both right angles. So we are given that they are congruent. We are given that they are supplementary. Therefore, we know that angle one and angle two are right. And if we drew a picture of that, it might look like this, where these two are equal and they're supplementary. They add on to they add up to 180, therefore they also have to be right angles as well, okay? So let's move on to actually writing some proofs. So here we have a proof at the top. I have a given statement and a proof statement at the top. And then here's our picture over here. So go ahead and copy that down and uh, pause and copy it down. Okay, so now we're going to look at the given statements. So remember, we're, if you follow my steps for writing a proof, we're going to start with putting a, oops, I did it wrong, putting a box around the prove statement. So I'll have to wipe this out. Okay, so putting a box around the prove statement and drawing it on the picture. So our goal is to prove that angle 2 and angle 3 are congruent. So angle two and angle three are congruent. That's my goal. And I'm given, here we go, now I can go ahead and do this one, that angle one and four are congruent. So I'm given that one and four are equal. Okay, so now remember, uh, so our, we just did the first two steps. We looked at the proof and we drew it. We looked at the given and we drew it. Step three is to see if there's anything else from the picture that will help us. And I told you to look, vertical angles could be one of them. Well, we just learned on over here that all vertical angles are congruent. So we can use that, the vertical angles theorem, to say that one and two are equal. And we can also use it to say that four and three are equal. Aha! Since I already have it drawn on here, what my goal is, is two and three are equal. And I can see that they are because if two is congruent to four and one is congruent to two because of vertical and four is congruent to three because of vertical, therefore two has to be congruent to three. So there we go. So let's start with writing a two column proof on this one. And so we're going to draw our, write our two column proof. I'm gonna be using a little bit more space than what's given here. 
So this is my statements, S. This is my reasons, R. And uh, we're going to first write the given statement. So the given statement is angle one congruent to angle four, and that is given. Our second statement is to say that we have vertical angles going on here. So my second statement is angle one is congruent to angle two. And um, also, I'm going to go ahead and throw in a third statement. It's the same thing. So angle um, three is congruent to angle four. And the reason for these is the same. They're both vertical angles. OK, and we know from the previous ones that they are congruent. So therefore, vertical angles have to be congruent. OK, so if that's the case, then we can say that 2 is congruent to 4 because you'll notice that these two, if one's congruent to 4 and one's also congruent to 2, therefore 2 has to be congruent to 4. So that'll be my fourth step. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. And my reason for that is the transitive property. Remember the transitive property from a previous lesson. Okay, so we're getting closer. We got from uh, one and four to two and four, and now we need to get from two and four to two and three. Well, remember that these two now we'll be looking at, if four is congruent to three and four is also congruent to two, then these two have to be congruent to each other. So step five is what we want to prove. So, uh, angle two congruent to angle three. And my reason is, again, transitive. OK, so there's a two-column proof. Now let's use this proof to write a flowchart proof. OK, and um, what we're going to do is I'm going to write it down here. I need a little bit more space than I'm given. So I'm going to start with a box, and inside the box I'm going to write the statement. So angle 1 congruent to angle 4, and my reason is given, and you put your reason underneath the box. So we're going to write given here. Okay, so now we need to look and see these two things, these next two statements are completely separate from each other. Uh, they have the same reason, but I'm going to put them in separate boxes. So I'm just going to go ahead and do another box down here for the second step and a third box here for the third step. Okay, so um, my second step is angle 1 congruent to angle 2 and then angle 3 congruent to angle 4. And I'm looking up here at my two column proof. Both of the reasons are vertical. So I fill that in. And then, the re and I notice now my next step, step four, is taken from these two steps, these two up here, right? These two steps is what makes step four true. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two boxes and show that this next step is here. So that's angle two is congruent to angle four. So it's one is congruent to four, one is congruent to two, therefore two is congruent to four. And so I'm able to combine them together to show that that's true over there, okay? And my reason, again, uh, up here, remember we wrote it, is transitive. Okay, so last, we're gonna combine these last two here. So we have three and four, and two and four. So we can combine this with this one to get my last statement. Angle two is congruent to angle three by transitive. So there we have it, okay? So you can, the nice thing about a flowchart proof is you really see how things are connected and how things work together with a Two column proof, you don't see that as much. So in some instances, it's a lot easier and more understanding. You can you can make more sense of a flowchart proof 
then you can a two column proof. But two column proofs in geometry are more common. So we're going to write flowchart proof is down here. Okay, paragraph proof is basically just taking everything that we just did and writing sentences. So we say it is given that angle one is congruent to angle four. So that's my first statement. Then I can, I'm going to go ahead and combine these two together because they're both vertical angles. Um, by vertical angle theorem, angle one is congruent to angle two and angle three is congruent to angle four. So that's my second and third step. My fourth step, I'm going to say by the transitive property, angle two is congruent to angle four, and then I'll say it again by the transitive property. Angle two is congruent to angle three. So as you can see, I'm taking the steps and rewriting them in sentence form. So there's our all three types of proofs. Two column, flow, and paragraph. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.